1988, you couldn't turn on the radio without hearing Bros telling you about how little they owed you. Nothing. They owe you nothing. Ooh, nothing at all. Much of the success of Bros as a musical tour de force was down to the fact that the band consisted of two brothers. So how can we take the success of Bros and multiply that power by 3.5? Well, you take the two brothers of Bros, quick maths, two multiplied by 3.5, that gives you seven brothers. Seven brothers. You're probably thinking I've gone mad. And you're right, Susan, I have. But in this case, actually, I'm talking at least a modicum of sense as I bring to you Marmalade Beer by Seven Brothers Brewery. Hello, welcome to Food View UK. My name is Stuart and this is Top of the Hops where I drink beer and tell you what I think about it. What is this? Some kind of community channel? Who is this man? Where is Michael? These are all valid questions, but valid questions that make you look somewhat silly because if you are an OG Food View UK viewer, don't even have to go back that far into the annals to find that I used to always present Top of the Hops before Michael Jameson got power mad and started drinking all the beer him self. Anyway, enough about Michael Jameson's megalomania, more about the beer. So this is by Seven Brothers Brewery, who are from Manchester, as am I. So I'm very excited to try this beer. This is a beer that has been made in conjunction with Dewar's Marmalade. Got some of the Dewar's Marmalade here. This is Dewar's Manchester Marmalade. Now Dewar's are another Manchester company. I didn't know that. I should have probably worked that out. So we've got Dewar's Manchester Marmalade and we've got Marmalade Beer made with Dewar's Manchester Marmalade. Two products from Manchester coming together all over your boy like Craig David in 2001. So what are we expecting from this beer? First of all, this is a West Coast IPA, a hoppy beer. Now, Michael recently reviewed on the channel a uh, New England IPA, and there's a big difference between a New England IPA and a West Coast IPA. Both very hoppy beers, but with a West Coast IPA, you tend to get a piney, resinous, more bitter finish. And with the East Coast, the, what, the New England IPA, what they want is a fruitier, smoother, juicier, less bitter beer. Both great styles of beer. This is the West Coast style, so we're looking for a piney, resinous flavour, and that makes perfect sense when you think about a marmalade. You've got those bitter peel flavours. That's going to work really well with the kind of hot profile that you get in a West Coast IPA. Let's have a look at the blurb. First of all, do you know what? This, this packaging is great. You've got the same art on the beer can as you've got on the marmalade. Um, we've got the same colours. We've got the, the logo here, which is harking to Dewar's. So we've got the dual branding, Seven Brothers and Dewar's. The can design on this is really, really good. It really fits the brief of making it tie in with the marmalade. Seven Brothers and Dewar's. Two families. Two families. Now, we've got Seven Brothers in one family. We can only assume that they're only willing to work with other families with a large number of brothers involved. So we've got upwards of 14 brothers already involved in the production of this beer. That in itself is exciting isn't it come on speaking of brothers who's your favorite brother like obviously some brothers are, are very very famous you know my favorite brother is actually julia roberts's brother eric roberts who must always legally be referred to as julia roberts's brother eric roberts he really is the best of the best two families sharing similar values working together to bring you this wonderful creation the jewish family has been perfecting the art of preserving since 1881 preserving the art of preserving Doing only a little longer than we've been brewing beer. Specially selected hops and malted barley carefully combined with tangy, tasty, tantalising Dewar's Manchester marmalade has resulted in a bright, hoppy beer that's classically bitter with a piney resinous and citrus aroma, subtly sweet with an orange hue. It not only looks amazing, it tastes incredible too. I do love it when the description backs up my beer knowledge. Piney, resinous, booyah, West Coast IPA knowledge in your face. Michael Megalomaniac Jameson. Right, let's open it up. It's uh, 2.2 units. Don't know why I'm telling you that. We'd rather know the volume. 5%. Now that's, I mean, that's clever, right? Ideally, I like an IPA that's a little bit stronger, but by brewing a 5% beer, what you're doing is you're making this more appealing to a mass, mass market beer drinkers. Because once you start getting the 6 and a half, 7 percenters, it's a bit much for some people. Also, can affect your price point as well. I have to be honest, I don't know how much this retails for because this was sent to us by Seven Brothers. Thank you very much, Seven Brothers. I'm sure Michael will do some research and pop like a, a figure here. If he doesn't, just goes to show what a terrible human being is. And that's who you want to see on your screens. 
This is more about you than it does about him, really. Let's have a pot. Now, I haven't got a Seven Brothers glass, but I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll pull out. I'll pour some beer on the floor and I'll pull out a Manchester glass for us there. Just, uh, it seems apt. So, let's have a look at that. We have got a nice orangey, fairly dark, really rocky head on that. Should we have a smell of it? it smells good, you know. <laughs> I can really smell oranginess, but then again, a lot of IPAs, West Coast or New England, you do get a, a citrusy orangey nose feel, smell, it's called Stuart, not a nose feel, but you've definitely got an oranginess there, which we both, we both expect and welcome in the beer. I just drank it then without announcing that I was going to drink. I can only apologise. You deserve better from me, and I'll try and be better in the future. This is not as in-your-face piney as some West Coast IPAs that you can get. I do find some West Ice, West Ice Coast PAs, West Coast IPAs, to be something of a challenging drink. You know, it's a, it's almost like up in the bitterness. It's, you know, man points. Oh, this is a bitter beer. But actually, this is... Quite smooth, but with a nice bitterness washing it down. Now, am I getting marmalade? We'll pour some more out and see. I'm not sure that I'm getting marmalade. But I'm getting oranginess. Quite a thin mouthfeel, an actual mouthfeel this time. Quite a thin mouthfeel refreshing beer this would be a really nice summery beer you know it's a it's a, an autumnal heading into winter's night now where you might want something a bit darker a bit richer a bit stoutier a bit porterier this might i think this would be a great summery beer you know really particularly five percent as well it's fairly sessionable a few of these now coming back to that can i taste the marmalade Back through the annals of Food Review UK, I looked at some Seven, seven Brothers beers once before, brewed with leftover Kellogg's cereals, and I felt that the Cocoa Pops Sling It Out Stout, was, you could actually taste Cocoa Pops in it. I felt that the chocolatey flavour in the stout was very Cocoa Poppy, and I think more so than this is particularly marmalade -y. Is it citrusy? Yes. Does it have a pleasant bitterness? Yes. Does it have an orangey underlay? Like... For example, a 1970s carpet. Yes, it does. But can I nail down the, the taste of marmalade? Perhaps not. It's a very good beer, though. That is a very good beer. Dewar's Marmalade West Coast IPA. Brewed in conjunction with Dewar's Manchester Marmalade. I'm going to be having this on some crumpets in the morning. It is a solid four-star beer. Thank you very, very much for watching Top of the Hops on Food Review UK. Thank you very much for persevering. If indeed watching me in a video has been something that you've need, needed to persevere with, much like the makers of Dewar's Marmalade have persevered with the preserving since 1881. Thank you. Hopefully it has not felt like 140 years. It has felt like the mere 10 minutes or so that it has been. And once again, I can only apologise for not being Michael Jameson. And that's something no one should have to do. But I'm doing it anyway. Because that says more about me than it does about him. Goodbye. You must be mad, mate!